Yes, so this conversation has been triggered by what one of the alleged perpetrators in this killing uh, said um, from the courts. We understand that he said that uh, he had been induced by watching money rituals on TV and contacted or got in touch with a ritualist. We'll start the conversation. Gentlemen, good afternoon to you and thanks for joining us. Um, I'll start with you, Sam Mens. You, you're, you're a media manager and owner. The big question really is, is it, is it a fair conclusion to say that the Ghanaian media is not regulated? The content that we put on TV, radio, what have you, not regulated? Well, I mean, I think, I think you've just described it. It's, it's not regulated. It's, it's not. Um, are you asking whether it's fair or...? That's the fact. Well, that's the fact. It's not. Now, so why is that? Why are we operating the media, putting content out, and nobody is, you know regulating it, watching it, to make sure that it meets certain standards? Maybe we've, we, we, we've taken the democracy thing a bit too far. Uh, we think that um, media regulation also means media control. It means that if you regulate, you are controlling. I think that's, that's the context which um, makes people hesitant to you know, intervene. But I think media and democracy have a relationship, um, but all for the benefit of society. And society is, ev is evolving. And so what we probably um, accepted in society decades ago may have been exposed to new realities, which calls for a review of the relationships so I think, yes, maybe we overlooked some of these things in times past, but it's time for us to take a second look. And how do you draw the line, really? How will the line be drawn between controlling and regulating? Well, I don't have an answer to that, but um, I know that we have modeled our media um, along the likes of the UK, um, especially the Commonwealth systems, and then the US to a large extent. And if we model it after them, question is, do they regulate their media? The answer is yes. And so why don't we regulate our media? Maybe we haven't gotten there yet, but I think it's time for us to take a second look. For you as a media manager, when you hear criticisms that there's a lot of arbitrariness and patronage Anybody is taking whatever and putting on content, uh, putting on, on TV or radio, what have you. How do you re react to that? I don't, I don't even think it's criticism. I think it's just a commentary um, about the realities. Um, because it's, it's, it's like a blank check for any and everybody. Um, it's media and, and now the, the, the context of media itself... Um, has no borders like it used to be when we were sure that we had traditional media, radio, television, newspaper. Now it goes beyond that. And, 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 and to control it is not possible. But to regulate it and give direction, as in be able to establish the limits of decency, what is acceptable, what is not acceptable, is what we are talking about, you know. So it's doable, but we need to be willing and um, um, be able to accept the changes. Give us, give us a, a peek into your practice and your experience. So you're a media manager. Mm -hmm. From where you sit, yeah. what goes into the decisions and the, the kind of filters you have before you put the content out? Well, you see, pre-produced programs are easy to manage. But where we have been exposed, or if I say overexposed, is the live programs. And that's where the challenge is. And a lot of the live programs that we see on TV calls for the question, do we allow such programs to go on? How does society benefit? I think that's a bigger question. I mean, why do you promote media to the disadvantage of your own society? And I don't think that we need necessarily... Capital. Mm -hmm. Say again? Money. Yes, but why should somebody enrich themselves to the detriment of the very foundation 
that holds us together as a people? I think that's a question. Yeah. So somebody may be motivated to do it in a particular way, but is it for the good of the general society? I think that's a question we should be asking. Okay. Lawyer, Lawyer Pong, I'll take brief comments from you. Yeah. Your thoughts about generally the contents that the Ghanaian media chants out. Well, I think that by and large, it is quite fair. Um, there are some extreme situations that one may observe over time. But I think it's also, as Samen said, um, because of uh, past, um, something that it is better to allow people to express themselves in any way and manner that um, will enable them to carry out or disseminate any information or let people hear about them, whether it is wholesome or not, than to gag them or not to afford them the opportunity to be heard. Because freedom of speech also includes freedom to give information and opportunity for people to receive the information. But it looks as if that um, what we see on TV and also in other f types of media is to some extent re a reflection of the practices that we have been used to over the years. I mean, generally people like to get their money doubled in this society. So when we were little, you go to the market, this Azana one, Azana two. You know that? You know Azana one, Azana no. two? You know that? I'm sure some men knows. So this guy has some small rope. Mm -hmm. All right? Do the, and then we say do you put one pool. CD there. Yeah. If you win, you get 20 CDs. So sometimes they have some guys who walk about. So they will win. You never, at that time, you will not know that they are all one. They are conspirators. <laughs> They've so conspired. your parents have sent you to go and buy some tomatoes. You want to double it. And by the, the, the first one you win. Okay. And then they will motivate you. That's what draws you in. Yes. They call it Azana <laughs> 1, Azana 2. I see. And by the time you realize all the money is gone, you see it over time. That is why. And sometimes it gets to the higher level of unregulated banking institutions, for example. And you see top class elites all falling prey. It's all because we like to have our monies doubled for us instantly instead of taking steps to maybe invest it in the legal, regulated way. And that is why the media, in fact, these people pay money for the advert to be done. You think if they don't have patronage, they would have been in the position to continuously pay for this advert, which mm. I believe may be expensive. Yeah. Some men can tell us or you. So, <laughs> strictly speaking, they, there is a market for it. For all the bad reasons, there's a market for it. And people fall for it. Years ago, when somebody is a juju man or a money doubler or whatever, they were hiding in some small enclave under some tree somewhere. Now they put up in the open. huge advertisement. The advertisers are also getting money. They are also ready to do it for them. You understand? And people like to see it. Internet. Now they advertise on social media. They are comfort. They send are now, you friend requests. Yes, your <laughs> comforts are now friends of almost a lot of people around. Some have also are hiding behind the name of God with their comfort thing. And sometimes you think it's so genuine. You go in and you realize that. So in the nutshell, there's a market for it. And who are those who are buying? It is the same people. Now we have realized, especially, I think there should be some monument, a project named after this poor young man, so that any time we remember what he has been through, then we must also remember that it is just the time, and this is now, for us to look again at this. But blaming it on the media alone will not work. I'm saying that people will do it whether they watch it on media or not. It is about trying to go back to the moral practices and decent practices that 
good work, decent work pace okay. also. Otherwise, we can close down some media houses that have patronage for it. People will continue to look for these people and do it. But when it gets to the stage where people of, say, 16 or 18 years are now learning about these things, it may have been the case that had happened previously, but because the media wasn't as vibrant as it is now, we may not have heard of it. But we are years ago, we heard of, uh, if I may be forgiven, Kofi Chinto, for example. We knew about things about rituals. They wanted to use um, his body, his blood for, and things like that. But those were by adults. Now we are talking about younger persons. Perhaps somebody said, a friend of his has kambu. He doesn't have kambu. And then he thinks that he can get his money double. So it's important we talk about the media, as I'm saying. But if the wider society doesn't change our way of life, media or no media, things like this will go on. And as we are looking at the media, if you are not, it is the same media that has brought out this. So if you don't take care, and we overly criticize the media and people raise their hand against it. This needs to happen and we won't hear to even talk about it. You want to make an intervention? Yeah, I, 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 again, so my view is we, we will have to move away from the reference to the media as an industry and start looking at the concept of media. Okay, now Yao's reference is actually media with particular um, um, emphasis on information dissemination, which is, I mean, over 200% positive. We are talking about the media as an interface, which becomes a reflection of a certain kind of societal elements. What we see will influence us. And so our idea of media would be something from radio to internet to television to newspaper to outdoor mm. and to even motion messaging which is what we find on vehicles and other things it cuts across a wide array we are saying that yes society has its defects but responsible exposure to media may help to either pronounce it and promote it or lessen its negative effects. Okay. So for something that has happened in Kaswa, and I'm sure we'll, we'll, be, we'll be getting there, I don't think the point is um, blaming the media alone. But what we are saying is that the media is exposing us in a way that could have been managed better. So it gives us the opportunity to have that conversation. Very much. I, I'd like to take, take us back to what, four or five years when um, the NMC tried to introduce the content standards regulation, which was kicked back or kicked against by the media, by members of the media, um, Giba. But, but that's not le true. Giba led that. It, and it, it wasn't true that it was kicked against. Well, th they had a concern with certain portions of the, the we, regulation. They had a concern with the fact that the NMC wanted to hijack a certain portion of the duties of the NCA. Can I just quote this, that the, the concern the, the GIBA had was that the regulation required media owners to apply for content authorization. From who? The NMC. Exactly Submit the program guide and content <laughs> for approval and go by a set of rules stipulated by the NMC. And if they defaulted, they would pay a fine or serve between two and five years in jail. Exactly the point I was making, that they wanted to hijack the job of the NCA. So this is the reason for the pushback? Yes. And they did it without consulting the wider media management, uh, me, uh, media ownership group. And that's why I happen to be on the NMC and also an executive member of GIBA. So <laughs> I, I wore two hats. How did you manage that? <laughs> well, I, I, they looked at me with suspicion when I went for <laughs> NMC meetings. <laughs> Interesting. Kind of but, big but interface. <laughs> that, Samez, that would have been an attempt to no, regulate. Have, no, no. That, you see, again, that's an error. It wouldn't be the first time we would be trying that. Mm. 
It wouldn't be. It was actually the first time we had gotten so close. But when we got so close, we also noticed that some people were trying to usurp the powers of other people. And for me, from where I sit, I think that's the more reason why the Supreme Court rejected. It's not that the Supreme Court is not in favor of regulating the media. So when they make it sound like, and we wanted to do it and the Supreme Court did not allow us, I think that is not a fair representation. The Supreme Court had indicated that allowing it would amount to censorship. Uh, is that what they said? Is that what they said? Can you read that? Allowing, allowing the NMC regulation. That's allow paying for. You see, that's you see, paying for. That's what they were against. But the point is that if you apply to NCA, there's some process that you go through. So at which point is NCA going to leave that their role and hand it over to NMC? You know, so that's where the conflict was. So it wasn't just Giba that was against it. The NCA too was against it. You see, but they went to court and they went to flop. But question is, why haven't they represented the thing to parliament? Because they also went to parliament. Yeah. You understand? Because, uh, you see, the issue of media regulation is something that will happen. It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of and time. And from where you sit, the media is open and will welcome it. It is free for all. It is free for all. It is I the apex of indiscipline. Everybody does what they want because there are no boundaries. So that is a problem. But we should look for a solution to the problem, not to paint a picture of convenience for a certain group of people because they just want to control anyhow. Now, the NMC itself has a certain mandate. It may not be exhaustively, um, you know, it, it may not be exhaustive in solving all the media problems, but let's ask ourselves to what extent have they dealt with their own mandate? That's the question. What's your response to that question? Well, I don't have an answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we can look at the, um, the functions of the NMC. Uh, but before then, I think sometimes we forget that the Constitution itself is not against the enactment of laws that may ultimately be seen to be regulating the media. So if you look at Article 164 of the Constitution, uh, it says the provisions of Articles 162 and 163 of this Constitution are subject to laws that are reasonably required in the interest of national security, public order, public morality, and for the purpose of protecting the reputations, rights, freedoms of other persons. And whenever in law, as you know, you say subject to, it means that whatever is subject to the other is subservient. You see, so one mm -hmm. is to, as we all know, it's about freedom and independence of the media. There shall be no censorship in Ghana. There shall be no impediments in the establishment of private press or media. And there shall be no law requiring any person to obtain a license. Editors and publishers of newspapers and institutions of mass media shall not be subject to control or interference by government, shall not be penalized or harassed for the editorial opinions. All agencies of mass media shall at all times be free to uphold the principles, provision of objectives of this constitution. But the law is saying that this is subject to any laws that are reasonably required, for example, in the interest of public morality. Mm -hmm. So there is no illusion about this. The constitution itself recognizes that there should be laws that are fashioned along the lines of protecting even the reputation and rights and freedoms of others. But this is what so far, and it's one of the mandate of the NMC, of course, to help parliament pass these laws. And this is one of the things that so far, as Sam is saying, they may have failed. But their functions are in 167, to promote and ensure freedom and independence of media for mass communication and information, take all necessary appropriate measures to ensure establishment and maintenance, and this is also important, of the highest journalistic standards in the mass 
media, including the investigation, mediation, and settlement of complaints against or by press or other mass media, to insulate state-owned media from government control, make regulations by constitutional instrument for registration of newspapers, publications, etc., to perform such other functions as may be prescribed by law not inconsistent with this constitution. So I think they have to take this holistically and especially under 164 to now support parliament to fashion out laws that in particular will protect public morality and the reputation and freedoms and rights of others. This is very significant. And when that is passed, I don't think that anybody will complain that it is a form of uh, censorship or restricting the mandate of the media. Of course, the content will also matter as to the extent to which these laws may be passed. That's what I'm saying. Elsewhere, they could have passed a law and used the name of this poor young man as the name of that law. So any time we remember the law and the gentleman, we will remember where we had been previously. And so it's important that whether as the media, now the parliament allows private members bill. Yeah. So I think even as an association or even as individuals, if not directly through members of parliament, this can be done. After all, those, the banks whose license were revoked, at least two of them, have through a member of parliament been able to get parliament to even form a committee to investigate these matters. And I think, and as um, Honorable um, Speaker Bagman said, we are in the era of um, constitutional governance. So we should look at this and all agree that the unregulated, as it were, media landscape is just not helping all of us. And so there's a need to do a balancing act, not so much to restrict, but at the same time not to leave it to chance for just everybody and anybody to... And sometimes when you look around, there are some who are automatic members of the Ghana Journalist Association, but there are some who are not members. And you wonder who would then subject them, if there is a body at all, to any control. There may be media commission. Sometimes you go there and, I mean, things may not also be the way okay. you look at the... the ultimate goal of communication and you may tap the person in the back of the hand and things like that. So it's, regulation is important. Depends on how we go by it. Vero, Lawyer Paul, let's talk about the Giba versus Attorney General case. From, um, from where you sit, would you agree with the decision that the court you know, gave in, in striking out or turning away that, uh, the content standards regulation? Well, I mean, because of the clause that sort of yeah, wanted see, to censor you see, the courts, media. Sorry, courts are not, it's not their business to fashion cases and hear it themselves. <laughs> they hear cases that are brought to them. We call them issues. They may sometimes draw out their own issues, but the issues must not be different from the facts that have been presented to them. So I believe if today a new law were to be passed consistent with Article 164, as I read to you, mm -hmm. and it's not inconsistent with any provisions of the Constitution. I am not sure that the Supreme Court, st standing here, and I'm just conjecturing, will just strike it down only because they believe that it will amount to censorship. Because there is a fine line between what amounts to censorship and what Article 164 required to be done. So, so that Article 164 requires that there should be laws that should ensure the maintenance and the observance of public morality. And what we are talking about is purely about public morality, you understand, today. So if now there is a law along these lines, but what was sent to the Supreme Court was not a general hypothetical case about whether or not laws should be made to regulate the media to ensure maintenance of public morality, um, non-infringement of people's freedoms and reputation. If that one comes today, I believe 
that if the facts are right, perhaps they may give a decision different from this, not because the previous one is wrong, but because the issue that was presented to them just required them that they should. And, and the, an aspect of it where the um, Gimba was concerned about the, um, I mean, the injunction, they said it clearly, and it's here, that it was going, the Attorney General had made it clear that they were going to apply the LI 2224, which may lead to even criminal sanctions. Yeah. And that was a particular issue before the court. In which Where you would the, pay a fine or say you, between uh, two uh, and five yes. years. And they to said be determined that by the commission. By the commission itself. And, you know, when it comes to criminal sanctions, generally, the court is the final determining body the final judicial power, when it comes to sanctions, criminal sanctions, it rests with the court. Even though an institution may be given the power to determine it, mm -hmm. but the, ultimately, it should be the court. Okay. Because issues of innocence and so on are involved. Okay. So at the end of the day, that was what they pronounced on. And it should not be taken as some answer to be that the Supreme Court or the courts are against the um, fashioning of a law that will ensure that we uphold Article 164. Yes, or that the media is unwilling to be regulated. Oh, yes. So, um, I, so I, want to, I want you to break it down. Wait, um, me, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, let me give you a little background. <laughs> you see, I think Yao has captured it. And where, why are we here? Because the Media Commission was reluctant to involve all the stakeholders adequately so that we can put together all the concerns and the views. I think that was Giba's problem. So Media Commission, Giba made an offer to the Media Commission to open up discussions before this thing is submitted. Okay? They refused flatly. They refused. This was after the court ruling? No, before. before. So that's actually that's what led us to the court. Okay. So they did they hurriedly put some forum together somewhere without the presence of Giba and then, and then, and then convinced themselves that they had held a <laughs> stakeholders meeting. <laughs> we rejected that. We wrote to them, requ request, requested that we should have the meeting so that everybody's view would be brought on board. And the media commission refused. So they went ahead to submit the thing to parliament. That is where we ran to court. So this is the background. It, well. There was not enough consultation, consultation to take everybody's view and consent. What has happened since the nothing. court gave? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even finish my question. Nothing has happened. You no, know, nothing. No. Because, you see, I don't, they, 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 <laughs> they were demotivated after they got the response from the Supreme Court. And, you know, going to court also requires some money. I, I don't think the media community has that kind of money to be going to court all the time. Um, and maybe the attitude is, well, it's in the interest of the country if the Supreme Court says, no, what should we do? But that will mean that the status quo will persist. Well, well that's what we are suffering. That's what we are yeah. suffering. And from what you said, mm -hmm. as um, somebody who, a media owner who, or manager who puts content out, mm -hmm. where we've got a lot of um, noise, a lot of wrong content being put out, yeah. it means that we are going to continue to operate in the jungle. Yes, it is. It, that's what Until it is. But the point is, you see, what is wrong is wrong. For instance, if somebody sits on TV and creates money, mm. okay, forget about the media. But, yeah, what does the law say about creating money that is not earned through the money system? Is it fake money? Is it counterfeit? <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying that, yes, we are not there yet, but what is wrong is wrong. If somebody goes on, on, on TV to go and shoot, 
to go and shoot another person. Mm -hmm. You need a media law to, to convict the person. No. Shooting what is, is shooting. Wrong is wrong. That's, That's what I'm what saying. I What's said. wrong is wrong. In, in our research around this, we chanced upon <laughs> Section 137 of the Criminal Offences Code. Mm -hmm. And um, I asked my producers to project it. And I, if you, you indulge me, um, mm -hmm. it says that the, the title is charlatanic advertisements in newspapers. Mm -hmm. And it says the publication in any journal or newspaper of any advertisement or notice relating to fortune telling, palmistry, astrology, or the use of any subtle craft, means, or device whereby it is sought to deceive or impose on any member of the public or which is calculated or likely to deceive or impose on any member of the public is illegal and the editors, publishers, proprietors, and printers of any journal or newspaper in which any such advertisement or notice as aforesaid is published shall be shall each severely be liable to a fine not exceeding 500,000 Ghana cities. So if it's if this is what the law says mm -hmm. are the proprietors, the media owners, the publishers are they not why are they breaking the law and why is nobody doing anything about it? You see admittedly this law was made in the early 1960s. Before social media. So you see that the subtitle is charlatanic advertisement in, in newspapers. newspapers. Yeah. You see. So you may, and you see, it, there, there's still an ongoing argument about interpretation of penal um, acts or penal code or criminal code or things like okay. that. Even though the code says now that you may apply it liberally. So then one may say that because it's a penal code, you're talking about only a newspaper. Mm -hmm. But others may say that newspaper here should be interpreted liberally okay. to apply to... Yeah, uh, again, we don't want to put ourselves in a box. Mm -hmm. I think the whole essence of this discussion is to raise the issues that we are being confronted with now. At least there's an intent here. Mm -hmm. This can be reviewed. Yes. I don't know how you guys do it. It okay. can be reviewed. And that's why, again, from the beginning I said, let's not limit it to the media industry, but the concept of, the media, concept of media. So that now if it's redefined, it can capture things of this nature. The intent is clear mm -hmm. that you can't get away with these things. At that time, the dominant form of media mm -hmm. was newspapers or mm -hmm. print media. Yeah. So I can understand why this. Today, it's all over the place. New media has taken center stage. I've always asked the NMC, what is the NMC's own policy on new media? Mm -hmm. So that, Leopold, like, if somebody is sitting on TV, as we saw earlier, mm -hmm. conjuring money or, or, or throwing the money at people, who should bring the person to book if we are interpreting this, this uh, section 137 broadly? Well, generally, all of us have a duty imposed on us by the Constitution and the relevant laws to inform the appropriate institutions of state about the commission of crime. In fact, you can even arrest a person if he commits a crime in your presence, but make sure you take him or her immediately or soon, as soon as you can to a police station or other institution or an officer authorized by law to arrest or deal with allegations of offenses and so on. So it is our duty so that in a case like this, you see, also remember that if you, if I may be forgiven, if you take the Munte 3 case, mm -hmm. not only were the persons who were sitting on the radio station cited for contempt, but even the owners, there were people who were just secretary or directors and have had very little to do over many years with the station. They were all called. That is the angle. So that when a thing like that happens, not only must those sitting on the TV or who have allowed their section of the program to be used for that, but even the owners themselves must also be invited and questioned. And if they are not able to give proper answers and the Attorney General determines that it is enough grounds for prosecution, that can be done. So I'm saying that this can be interpreted liberally mm -hmm. to apply to all that is happening now. But you see, now the danger is also people then say, it's my religion. 
You know, some of these things are founded in a so I was going to ask you that yeah. should that mean then that only specific religions are allowed? Because somebody will say, Well, my religion is to do palmistry mm -hmm. or, or fortune telling. Yeah. Yeah, so and then where do we go from so there? That will also come in. And since I mean that uh, I think we are also carrying this whole democracy thing. I should be forgiven anyway, but <laughs> there are things that are coming up that I think we really need to have a second look at some of these things. Sometimes we carry our freedoms too far. Fortunately, in Ghana, there's no freedom that is without restriction. When you take the whole chapter of Article 5 of the Constitution that deals with freedoms, it says that all the freedoms are subject to public morality, public interest or national interest, and the rights of others. Very well. There's no freedom without restriction. At this point, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll try and get some social media messages and look at the way forward, what to do about the silence of the NMC, and uh, how do we get these charlatans to say off the screens. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Good Afternoon Ghana. I'll take some messages before we continue our conversation. And this is coming from, okay, no name. It says, good afternoon. The media owners and everyone involved have really failed us. Please, why is everyone talking about this crime? But they refuse to ask the simple question, where is the supposed malam? Presenters cease to ask the important questions. When you watch this new digital TV, you realize how crime and cheating are being promoted daily. Another message from Kabiesi in second D. He says, the proliferation of malams and money doublers on our screens is contributing or is, uh, contributing to people wanting to become rich in split seconds. The most fascinating aspect is that some of the Christian stations give them uh, the power to do so. Um, 
this person says, greetings to Yao Opal and Samens. Uh, with immediate effect, we call on the NMC and all other related institutions, into brackets, media houses, to regulate or censor programs or content or operations in Ghana. Ghana is suffering because of weak institutions. Our homes, parenting, and family units are all bedeviled with corruption and immorality. Churches, chieftaincy, and schools lack the enforcement of regulations. God save us all. Um, I'll try and take one more. Um, good afternoon, madam. With the issue of the Kaswa killing, we are here due to a plethora of issues. Looking at the ages of the perpetrators, you would realize that they left JHS not long ago. If we continue to say we have been punishing our children for a long time and we are still not on the moon, then we have not seen anything yet. Morality has eluded us. And Samens, I'll come back to you. Um, in, when you started in your, in, in your oration, you talked about looking at this as the concept of media and not necessarily the media institutions. So going beyond what we know as the print and electronic, etc. And this is important because of a new addition, which is new media or social media. With the silence from the NMC, we know that um, during um, Information Minister Kojo Ponkrumah's um, vetting, he talked about a, a certain review to include um, social media regulations or something around social media in the broadcasting bill. How, how are we operating? Because these days, social, um, social media is part of traditional media. Every TV station has got their social media accounts. How then are we operating social media as, as media, as traditional media? And won't we take what we are putting on TV that is causing a lot of problems and put it right there on social media, which is easily accessible? You see, so again, I will talk about the concept of media. Um, one, the mandate of the Media Commission, we need to take a second look at, um, review it so that it can address our clear and present challenges. If you go to the UK, for instance, the Ofcom, we call them, the Ofcom, um, are the regulators of the media. Now, they protect media content, they protect the licenses, and they protect consumers, okay? And they can punish. In fact, they can punish institutions and individuals. So if you misconduct yourself on a station and your station management doesn't see anything wrong, Ofcom can descend on you. So what I'm saying is that we can't have answers to all the questions, but we should be seen to be doing something. And the concept of media so that, for instance, the telcos by themselves are part of the media channels. Yeah. How many messages do they churn out in a day? That's communication. Okay, so we itemize all these channels and be able to reorganize the concept of addressing the challenges that they pose to us so we can benefit from media. See, I don't want to go into religion, but every country has a whole range of religious practices. Traditional African religion has its own. In every continent, they have their dominant religion. But tell me how they express these religious activities through the media. Not everybody can do this on TV. And I'm just saying that what is wrong is wrong. Very well. Um, we are drawing, we're drawing close to the, the, um, the, the conclusion of our conversation. Samens, quickly for you, um, you've made the point about the need for consultation. But the reality is that there's been some silence from the NMC. Well, I, 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 we can't say. Well, we if can't, is it that the work of, is it the work of the NMC is so multifaceted? Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't sit and say they've been silent. Maybe they are, they are engaging some um, aspect of society that I, I, we are What does the aware. future look like to you in 30 seconds? The future of Ghanaian media content? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I honestly don't know. It doesn't look good. It scares me. It scares you. Oh, yeah, it scares me. 
If we will go by this democracy, let everybody do what they want, and it's a new day, and all these irresponsible behavior, then we are going nowhere. Okay. Okay. Mm. I'll take your concluding remarks. Yes. Um, I think, so why is it that, let's say, Google or Facebook, are able to even prevent a sitting president in a country as powerful as the U.S. from sending across messages. But we are here. The sort of things that sometimes people say about others on social media, the sort of obscene messages. If somebody did that in the U.S., for example, you know, we are talking about even the president of the U.S. In the U.S., and people are able the to... The, the, those institutions are able to prevent him from sending across some of them which I think are even better than some of the obscene commentary that people say about others in Ghana on social media. Why are they able to do that? Why can't we even get these institutions whose media or facilities are being used Very well. to carry out this obscene, extreme obscenity to also and ensure that, or maybe National Media Commission can get them, whether Twitter or Facebook and so Google, and to help us to also block <laughs> or restrict some of these, these obscenity. And, and that's the, the, the conversation, regulating what we put out. Um, this has been Good Afternoon Ghana. Thank you, my guests, for coming in and letting us have this conversation. Thank you also for watching. And we're sorry we can't read all of your messages, but we got you some. Thank you. Join us again. It's bye for now. <laughs>